There is so much going on on this farm today. I'm so excited for today. There's so much that we need to fill you guys in on. Not only in today's video are we gonna be making our little patio off-grid spa temporary home look 10 times more beautiful, we're also gonna be working towards expanding our patio so it's three times the size of what it is now. And then we're gonna be taking you guys on an absolutely epic, epic adventure into the jungle of Panama. And you might be wondering why but we'll tell you guys a little bit more about this later on in the video. Since we moved here to Panama, so much about living on this side of the mountain has just been all about functionality. It hasn't been about looking nice or feeling good. This whole area in front of the bathroom has a lot to be desired. The hot water heater looks terrible. There's some pieces of wood slapped up there from four years ago. The front of our bathroom is like half trimmed out. Parts of it doesn't have corner trim on it and some of our metal beams are still just raw metal. And we have this shower that, um. It's, yeah, this doesn't, this doesn't work anymore. Well, a lot of this stuff's gonna be pretty tedious. I couldn't be more excited for today because I've been looking at this stuff for years. Now, one of the things I need to remind myself is when we installed this stuff, uh, we were still living in a school bus and I was 28 years old. And I've, I'm, a, I'm a little bit older now. I'm a little bit more patient now. And we're not living in 90 square feet. Yeah, you are going, you have to see how she's doing it because you are going to do it next. <laughs> I'm going to get you on the big worm. And I'm hungry. What are you going to do? Maybe if you blow fire, blow fire! Ah! You did it, Sadie! You burned the worm! Yeah! Should you blow fire in it one more time just to make sure? Oh! Dad, the lunch is ready. We got lunch ready? Yeah. What did you make? I made potatoes. You made potatoes? Yeah. Are they crispy? Of the crispy. The crispy potatoes? Yeah, the crispy potatoes. Me, you gotta wash your hands. I gotta wash my hands before we high five? Can we do it with this hand? Yeah. <laughs> What's my name? Yeah. My name's Jordan. What's your name? What's your name, Jordan? That's Jordan Michael Savio. That's me. What's your name? Say Savio. There's Sadie Savio. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Jordan Savio. We get the same last name. Yeah. Like, you have blue eyes like me. I do have blue eyes like you. Yeah. What are my eyes? Brown. Yeah. Like chocolate? Chocolate. Chocolate brown? Chocolate brown. <laughs> And there you have it, a nice box. Never would have thought it would take me nearly a whole day to build a box, but it did. <laughs> I need to let this glue dry. Oops, I just, I just touched it. Uh, I need to let this glue dry a little bit, give it one last sand, paint it one last time, put some doors on it, and this thing will be done. That'll be a tomorrow morning thing, but in the meantime, right behind you guys. I can't tell you how many times I've been editing these videos, sitting on the couch, late at night, early in the morning, and I just have to look at this thing, just half trimmed out. It just looks so bad, without trim there, without trim here. I'm so excited to trim this out. What do you got? Eggies. You got eggies? Yeah. Why are you carrying around eggies? Do you actually have eggies? What are you doing with this big plate of eggs? We can have a picnic. On, we can have a picnic. We can have a picnic. You want a picnic I'm, over here? Yeah. So Wiberto and Enrique just finished pouring these four footers right here. And it's so crazy when you take a step back and actually see how big this thing is gonna be. We don't even have all of our footers dug out yet. We still have one more row to go that's gonna go right here. Um, that's where the glass kind of house, glass little, 
I'm gonna call it my activity center. That glass house that we're gonna have built is gonna be my workout space, my pottery space, just my, my extracurricular activity space. <laughs> you can edit in there too, honey. I'll do the pottery while you're doing the editing. We can, we can be in there together, sweetie. All right, scratch that. Uh, we are canceled on the count of rain. One of the few places in the world where you have blue skies and you get a pretty good rainstorm that just rolls right through. And this is gonna get the roof all wet and I guess they're climbing around on that roof. And it's crazy, once you have kids, you start thinking about stuff that can happen to you and falling off of roofs. And right, let's be real, I got a pretty significant fear of heights, all right? Climbing around there when it's wet and slippery, I'm, I'm just not gonna do it. And that's one job down. Now we're starting another job. Driving down to town, going down to the lab. You guys, we are three days away from competing in the Panama Brewers Cup to be the co best coffee brewer in all of Panama. This is something that I've been working so hard towards that there's just so much going on in the background. Hello judges, my name is Jordan Saglio with the Morning Movement Coffee and today I come to you in celebration. For my second pour, 30 milliliters of water. From a high altitude, aiming for the center of the brew bed, creating turbulence in the flavor. You'll find notes of yellow fruits and lemon. Because in the words of Alexander Supertramp, happiness is only real when shared. Tim, woo! Couple little things. Couple That's little things. Little things. I'll let that one go dry. I could have done better. There was something that threw me off. Tomorrow it all begins. See you at 6 a.m. See you, bro. You gonna drive home like that, sweetie? You're listening to reggaeton. The reggaeton put her to bed. I just can't believe she fell asleep to this. I don't know if any of you guys have been to Central America before, or Panama before, but everyone listens to reggaeton all the time. Whether it's 6 a.m., whether it's noon, whether it's 10 p.m., midnight, reggaeton is like the national anthem here. And Sadie's becoming more and more Panamanian by the day because it just put her to bed. I know a lot of this coffee competition stuff can sometimes come off as a little out of touch. I mean, we're talking about a competition where people are serving coffees that cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a pound. And the whole the whole process just seems so over the top. And I'm totally aware of that. I guess the thing that I just care about the most is that you guys understand that we haven't lost our way. And I have a story to tell you guys from a little over a week ago that I think kind of encapsulates really what I value about this whole coffee business and this whole coffee industry that we've become a part of. So a few days ago, we took an adventure to La Comarca, which is the indigenous reservation where the Nobe Bugle tribe lives. This is protected land for the indigenous tribes of Panama, and no one can go there, not unless you have a specific purpose. And every time we enter this place, I just feel so fortunate, knowing that we're looking out over a place that so few people have been to. And the reason why we're allowed to enter is we're going in to buy coffee. But to get to these guys, it's quite the adventure. We have to drive over six hours, going through some incredible roads. And a lot of times there's no roads at all. We just have to drive straight through a river. After a long journey and a stressful journey, uh, pulling into Boabody, the town that we go to buy this coffee from, is just such a relief because it's such a special place. Our whole philosophy with this relationship and really our whole philosophy with our coffee business in, in general is what happens if everyone wins? And what happens if everyone gets a fair shake of the deal? But I want to be able to provide something for people that when they're having that coffee in the morning, it's something that they know came from a good place with good intentions. We've gotten to the point with the Nobe coffee farmers that they basically just save their coffee for us every single year. 
We basically drive up in our pickup trucks and they know that we're there to basically purchase their year long's work of working with their hands to produce something that is delicious. And how we've gotten to this point in this relationship is simply by doing one thing, and that's pay them what they deserve for this coffee. The first year, we paid triple what they were getting before for their coffee. And every year after that, as our business has grown and as we've become more efficient, we've paid them more and more every single year. So this coffee has been one of your guys' favorites. It's probably the one that's the most special to me that we do every single year. This coffee means everything to me. And the fact that you guys love it and that you've loved it year after year, and we've basically sold out in a matter of hours every single year, I just need to say thank you to you guys for letting us do this and letting us share the story. So if you guys wanna try La Comarca, it's an organic coffee and we have two roasts available. We have a dark roast and a medium roast. So no matter how you like to drink your coffee, we have you covered on this one. It's delicious. It tastes like chocolate and caramel and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. So if you wanna grab a bag before we sell out, click the link in the top of the description, grab a bag of La Comarca, share it with your friends and family and also share the story because this coffee is truly special. I just don't even know what glue I bought. It's like a mix between glue and spray foam. Luckily, nothing a good old sandpaper can do. I'm gonna be making my own wood filler, so I'm just gonna take some of the sawdust from the sanding and pour it in here. You see, honey, you do all these cooking videos, and this is my cooking video. Honey, I love it. I am like all about this right now. Listo? Toma este. Lleno. Lleno todo huecos. This is an all hands on deck kind of day. We got Iberto helping us filling in some of the holes from the screw holes. We got Enrique preparing some of this wood, getting some of the nails that were protruding a little bit flat. We're gonna be ripping through this trim today. I want this space looking beautiful by the end of the day. By the way, something absolutely hilarious about Sadie right now, her favorite, favorite, favorite song right now is All Star by Smash Mouth. And it's because of Shrek. We watched Shrek like a couple months ago and ever since she heard that song, she's always asking, play Shrek, play Shrek. <laughs> That's the way I like it and I never get bored. Woo! <laughs> All right, Mama's gonna get to work. Okay, can I have a kiss? I love you. All right, you close the door, girl. Have fun at your dance party. Yeah. I love her so much. Uh, let's just hope Rodrigo built this thing halfway decently. I think he built this like three years ago. I can't believe it hasn't just rotted away at this point. It probably is. And I'm just gonna collapse while I'm storming <laughs> up in the air. I don't know, honey. It looks pretty good. Done this. <laughs> We're getting to a little bit of a moment of frustration here. I think trim is probably our least favorite thing to do. That's why we've kind of been putting this off for a really, really long time. It's just so tedious and like for it to look good, it really has to be perfect. So today is the day that we're actually saying adios to two of our baby goats. They're getting much bigger now and they're starting to kind of get into our plants. They're eating um, grass like adults do now at this point so they don't need their mother's milk. So Karen, our friend that helps us Sadie in the morning, is actually going to be taking two of them today. She's going to be keeping one and then she's actually going to be giving one of them away to another nearby farm that they're going to utilize the girl goat for milk. You say bye to the babies? Bye, Bye babies. babies, enjoy your new home. I gotta be honest, sometimes it's hard to see our baby goats go because you do kind of become attached and you know, obviously like the mom is like, hey, where are my babies going? And the baby's like, where the heck are you taking me? I do feel like a big part of it too is like our whole lives, Jordan and I, and I think probably majority of you guys, like even when you go to the store, all the meat you buy and everything you buy is pre-packaged in these beautiful labels and you don't actually see the process. You don't actually see these animals being raised. It's just like, hey, that's beef. Hey, that's chicken. Hey, that's an egg. We are so disconnected from our food, which really just gives this land a whole nother purpose for me, especially raising Sadie and wanting her to also witness this. This took a lot of prep to get to this point, painting these boards, getting them cut just right. Let's have to finish up this dang trim, huh? The order of pieces and when they go up is important. So I have to start at this beam back here. Okay. 
I'm running out of gas, and I'm also running out of sunlight. Sun just set. But I have just a little bit of like that residual sunlight left to get up one last piece. Putting up trim takes a while, my goodness. But does it really tie everything together? I made a big mistake right at the end. Uh, that right there, you see all those nails sticking out? That's why you don't uh, do construction when it's dark. Homemade popcorn is one of the most underrated things. But it's so easy, you literally just fill a pan with just a little bit of olive oil or coconut oil, throw the kernels in there, turn it to like low, medium. Uh oh! Is it good? It's all, it's all done popping. We made it all. Should we add a little bit of salt and pepper? Put yeah. it in a bowl? Yeah. So yeah, just make sure your pan is big enough. Because <laughs> I don't know why I decided to use such a tiny pan. Honestly, it was the only one clean. I didn't feel like cleaning the big one. <laughs> hey. What are you doing? You're not supposed to be over here. We got to get you guys back home. Come on, you guys. Gotcha. <laughs> At least for today, I have company. I, um, I couldn't get her back. I mean, if I got some food and stuff, I probably could, but I kind of want to let her wander a little bit. Her grass is running a little low. It's been so dry. So I was just going to let her wander for the afternoon and eat some of the longer grass that's around on our property. I have accepted defeat on this one, you guys. Hopefully this is going to be the only time this weekend that I'm going to have to accept defeat. And that's because there's no way that I'm going to get this trim done. Uh, we have a flight out of here today at 6 p.m. There's just a lot of distractions. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to try my absolute best to make as much progress as possible. Because this box right here, this thing is just, this thing's just ugly right now. <laughs> So it's definitely making it a little bit more challenging, but we're getting through it, getting my arm, forearm workout in for the day. I am officially out of time. Um, we need to run. We need to get out of here. There's a lot of pressure right now to get off this farm, leave everything in a good place because we're going for four days and get to the airport so we can get to Panama City. But this is what I was able to do, you guys. Gotta get some handles on this. Probably a little bit of white trim going around the border, but that's the end of this one. Just a reminder, if you guys wanna check out our coffee, if you wanna grab a bag of La Comarca, we have a link to it down in the description below. Grab a bag before we sell out. We usually sell out of this thing in less than 24 hours. So check it out in the top link in the description. Thank you guys for following along, and we'll see you next time.